Um, so the other thing that happened in this special meeting, which I was looking forward to because I think it's an interesting issue, is uh, there was the joint meeting between um, the council and the historical commission with the mayor that the mayor had requested um, having to do with the Fernal property. And before this meeting, WCAC came out with some new information about what the mayor has planned. And I'm going to share my screen. Um, this is their post uh, about uh, what is planned for the Fernal. And this was a design that was put forward by the engineering firm that the mayor hired. And uh, you may remember I told you about a public meeting they had back in January. Um, this plan has apparently been approved by the Recreation Commission. I don't know when that happened. I didn't know that there was a meeting about this, um, but this is apparently a done deal that this plan has been approved and uh, is now out for bid. Um, so as you can see, it's a plan to uh, redo not the entire property, but a very large chunk of it with all different kinds of recreational amenities, things like disc golf, exercise stations, a skating track. There's also a fairly large area that's gonna be left sort of undeveloped as a nature area, which is exciting. Um, so yeah, this is a really ambitious plan. Um, it would be really exciting. I think between this and the rail trail, it would you know, put Waltham way ahead of our neighbors in terms of the type and variety of public space we have. Um, one thing I noticed, which was interesting about this plan though, is they said they're going to have a meditative labyrinth, memorial and walks, braille walk, honoring Fernald residents. So this seems to be the answer to the question of will there be a memorial, but it doesn't tell us very much. Um, at first glance, a braille walk seems like a, this was a, an institution for people with intellectual disabilities. So a braille walk seems like an odd way to honor them. It seems like braille is something that should just be on signs anyways. But I don't know, maybe this is a beautiful idea. They don't tell us very much about it here. Um, and as far as I know, there wasn't any involvement from the disability community in coming up with this plan so far. I had mentioned in a previous show, I talked to the director of the Mass Arc, who was interested meeting with the recreation department, but that didn't happen before this plan um, got passed. Um, so then in the meeting, um, the mayor actually wasn't there to ask them about this plan. She was there to ask the Council and the Historic Commission um, if they would agree on changing a memorandum of understanding they approved uh, a long time ago to uh, declare that 12 buildings on the site probably cannot be restored and will eventually need to be demolished. So she wants them to look through that list of 12 buildings and tell her if they have any concerns about that. Some of the councillors and one of the historical commission members did raise three specific buildings um, that they thought should be partially um, or totally uh, preserved. And that's the admin building, um, which is the one you've seen if you look up a picture of the Fernald online. There's also the West building and the Waverly building. I wasn't able to find pictures of those, um, but uh, they are planning a site visit. That's one thing that came out of this meeting. So maybe we'll get some pictures of those buildings out of the site visit. Um, Councillor Darcy raised those buildings and mentioned their architectural value. One of the members of the Historical Commission, um, Rachel Migdal, um, made a comment about perhaps the facade of one of those buildings could be um, preserved. And she mentioned that she wanted to learn more about it because it was possible that the, some of the stones in this building were laid by the people who lived at Fernald. And she was the only one in this meeting who made any reference to people who lived at Fernald. Even, you know, Councillor Darcy, who's been kind of a champion of this, he kind of framed the historical things in terms of like an architectural concern. So to me, that was the most important part of the meeting. And I, I'm very happy with um, that historical commissioner that she brought that up. Um, but it seems like the mayor is not asking for their opinion on these recreational amenities. Councillor LeBlanc actually started to bring it up and she told him not to. She said that wasn't the top, that was off topic. Um, so I think that if the council and the historical commission want to make sure that the site is memorialized appropriately, um, they're going to need to use this request about the buildings as less leverage to force a conversation about what's going on um, with these memorial type things on the property, because that affects the overall plan for how we're memorializing the site, which might include a 
preserving certain buildings. Um, so I hope Councillor Cates, who, who brought this up as um, one of his campaign issues, um, and specifically will do that, we'll, we'll try to get an assurance that the disability community will play a role in designing these memorials. Um, the mayor also brought up a lot of other interesting information that I don't think a lot of people knew. For example, one part of the, the site has been looked at it by an archaeologist to make sure it wasn't a, a, a grave site. Um, not the whole site, but a specific part that they were concerned about. She mentioned that there have been many uh, studies done on the site at different times, including when they were looking at it, using it for a high school. And actually, one of the members of the Historical Commission asked if they could get access to those studies. And she said, I thought you already had that. And he said, no, I was given it by the CPC head, Justin Barrett, and he told me I wasn't allowed to share it. And she said, oh, I, that's a misunderstanding. I didn't know about it. I'll talk to him tomorrow and we'll figure it out because you should have access. And he seemed reluctant to let it go. Like he thought maybe there was something else going on there that he wasn't totally trusting uh, that he was going to get the info. So that's why I mentioned it seems like Justin Barrett still has a role to play in this story. Um, there were other things she mentioned about um, past discussions of the site, some of which there are documents you can find online about, some of which you can't. Um, so I don't think we got a totally clear picture of the mayor. Oh, and she also managed mentioned that she has a list of buildings that she does want to have preserved. Um, that's a separate part of her process. And one of those she wants to turn into two units of affordable housing, which is huge to know that they actually are planning housing on the site. I don't know why only two units. It's a huge site. It seems like we could do better than two units. But she brought up a lot of information um, from past discussions about this that I don't think the public had during that meeting in January where everybody was upset with the recreation engineer who wanted to move forward on this. It seems like a lot of that that conflict could have been avoided if there were just um, if the mayor were just answering more questions about what her intentions are for the site. In her mind, this is already public, but it was publicized like 10, 15 years ago. People who are becoming concerned about the issue now really don't know a lot about what was going on. And that was one of the big takeaways um, from this meeting. Um, James and Chris, any comments? This kind of puts it into a different light, like when Darcy was trying to push for uh, the bus extension up Propeller Road because this entire site is entirely accessible from a uh, yet unconstructed road to Forest Street and Trapello Road exclusively. And there is no public transit access at all for, it's like an outdoor space that's only accessible by car from like two roads <laughs> from like the north side of Waltham. It's kind of- There's an electric place. train, what does that mean? But what it's on site, I think it's like a closed <laughs> yeah, but route. I'm so curious what electric train means and what does it do for the site? Yeah, and well, it's too bad there are a lot of things on the map like, wait, what is that? And we don't know. And that's what that presentation back in January was supposed to be about, but it got hijacked by all these concerns about the memorial just because in some of those concerns we now know were already being addressed, but the, we just don't aren't being told how. So, so yeah. it's disappointing that there's so much conflict that could have been pre prevented um, just by sharing more information about this with the public. Yeah, that's what I'm confused about because this it's such a difference from like one year ago or one and a half years ago, maybe two now, um, where we had a fernal reuse committee in the city council and we used to talk about what was going on with the fernal and it hasn't met in like over a year. It hasn't even been assigned committee members um, this session, um, which is almost going to be over at this point. Um, and and so when the last time I public I knew public information about the fernal, it was you know we were still talking about whether or not we should do an environmental study, and now all of a sudden there's an entire plan that's already accepted. I mean I feel like I'm like way unqualified to like give my analysis of this plan. I think it looks awesome, but I don't know enough about um, parks and disability advocate advocacy to say if this is um this is good, but it looks good to me. Yeah, I feel the same way. I was like really happy to see the plan, but then there are all these questions it raises where I'm like, but what about this? What I mean, one issue I'd heard people raise is it seemed like a lot of parking lot, a lot of pavement 
but that might be necessary since you can't get there on the bus and we don't know we might be getting a bus there but we might not and then if you know maybe there's a better way to deal with that because it's a huge piece of land that lots of people could use but access is going to determine how many people actually use it i think so i will qualify it is not entirely fair to say that if there's no public transit access because it is relatively close to the t-stop in belmont down the street but that does require having to walk up propello so 